What's up everybody? You know what? I had to bring the big gun special guest here because Apple just released, you know, you've heard me talk about just an incredible hearing experience. So you might recognize them from such keynotes as every single one, but I've got Sumble Desai, VP of Health at Apple, and John Turnus, C SVP of Hardware Engineering. Do you guys, you always make that so hard on us. Yeah, <laughs> we try. That's why we just it go by Symbol and John. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Let's Symbol do that. Sounds, okay, okay, sounds good. So thanks so much for making the time. You know, we're here to talk about um, just this incredible feat and just I'm excited about it. I told people right out of the fall event, although yes, the fall event was very, was everything iPhone, Apple Watch. I said the most important, the most impactful announcement from that was the hearing experience from AirPods because of just how they're going to change a lot of people's lives and it's hardware that they already have. So I was hoping that maybe you two could set the table because when someone hears this, they may not, may not know exactly what it is. So uh, I'm hoping you can kind of break it down because there, there's a lot of parts to this, right? Yeah, sure. I can I can kick us off. I think um, uh, it's super exciting for us as well, right? I mean, I think you know, one of the greatest things about working at Apple is you get to build products that can have a really, you know, be really impactful in people's lives. And uh, sometimes we get to do things where that impact is just truly profound, right? Whether it's health features on the watch or fall detection or emergency SOS. And, and this set of hearing, you know, health features is, is, is that. I mean, it's, a, it's an issue that affects so many people and we're so proud of, of getting to this point. And, you know, it's been a journey. Like, if it, it's actually all kind of tied up in the AirPods story, right? We launched the AirPods back in 2016 and they were this revolutionary, revolutionary new kind of way of building headphones, truly wireless. You know, the magic of the, ca the case, the charging case, that was all a, a new idea back then. And people love it and it's been an incredibly successful product, but it's also been this really wonderful platform for kind of research and development where we've been pushing really hard on the on the science and engineering of a lot of different things around around audio and hearing and you know features like spatial audio and and active noise cancellation and transparency and as we went through this journey we realized that these are the same building blocks that actually could could help enable this complete you know, kind of comprehensive hearing health solution. And so, you know, now we're finally at the point where we can we can share it with all of our users and we're unbelievably excited about it. And, you know, to get here, it's been a tremendous amount of work and, an, and just an incredible kind of partnership. Like on the engineering side, we've had this, this privilege of being able to partner with Sumble and her team on the health side who are so knowledgeable and, and can help guide us and explain, you know, this is what really matters. This is how we should push in this area. This is how it's going to make it better for people. Um, and so it's just such a, a wonderful thing to have partners like that when you're designing something like this. And so I think I'd, I'll hand it over to Sumble now because I think she can probably, you know, better explain the, the, the power of what, what these features are going to do. And I just want to start by saying, I think um, the point that John made, which is why this is truly impactful, is like we really take advantage of the fact that we work in this like multidisciplinary cross collaboration um, you know company where we have experts and so from a clinical standpoint like what we love is we work closely with engineering we work with design and you know we're thinking like software engineering and hardware engineering and that we bring all of that together and I think with our health features it's what makes it's really the secret sauce that brings it together and we get to bring the science and deliver that to people in a really truly impactful way. And so with hearing, you know, if you think about it, what's so powerful about hearing is it's how we connect with each other and the world around us. And, you know, we've really so often taken for granted and potential take for granted our hearing, but also just accepted that your hearing just simply fades away over time, right? And so the fact is that more than a billion people have mild to moderate hearing loss. And we were just so thrilled to be able to bring something that potentially could improve an individual's overall well being and quality of life. Um, you know, the science is definitive in showing that if you can actually improve someone's hearing, there's meaningful impact when it comes to their um, mental health, whether it's depression or social, isola social isolation or cognition. And when you think about that opportunity, about 75% of people that are diagnosed with hearing loss don't actually get the help they need. And so the opportunity to potentially fill that need is truly impactful. And it's really what motivated a lot of our teams to do this work, which is so personal for many of us. And you know what we thought about when we were designing the, pro the, the features is how do you build something that potentially needs to adapt to everyone's needs because everyone's different and it's a single product. So how do we do that? And also, how do we potentially also think about the varying ages of people that may be using this feature and various like 
people have different tech savviness. And so we wanted to really, we spent a lot of time thinking about how do we build something intuitive that really feels like an extension of someone's senses. And so, um, you know, obviously we're, we rolled out three key features. So there's the hearing protection feature that really protects you on by default, protects your hearing. And, you know, so much of, so many of us are exposed to loud noises every day. And the fact that if we can just get ahead of the curve and start using something like hearing protection, potentially um, we can prolong someone's ability to hear, you know, hear in healthy ways for longer. There's the hearing test, which enables individuals to take a hearing test that's clinically validated. It's, it's, on, it's basically validated against the um, gold standard of an audiogram, which is done in an audiologist's office. And then there's the hearing um, assistance feature. So the fact that we could bring this suite of products together is really powerful, and we're so excited about its potential impact. Yeah, I mean, it, it is really incredible. You know, I'm, I'm going to throw this out just as someone who's outside of what you all do, and I do feel like maybe the Apple Watch might have been the shift where Apple kind of turned a little more health-centric because it was this wearable, you started, you know, tracking some of these different metrics. I feel like that's where it started. And then also, you know, later on, the Apple Watch did have that ability to measure the, uh, you know, the decibel levels around you. Where did this idea, right? I know you guys are juggling a lot of apples at once. I had to say it. <laughs> but... <laughs> But what 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 was the you know where's the genesis of this? What inspired this? Was it you know a feature that you're like, huh? Maybe we need to dig a little deeper on that. I'm just kind of curious. How did this start? I, I, honestly, this this the first time we started talking about opportunities in hearing health was right about that time we launched those first AirPods, right? Mm. Because you know now we have a device. It's in people's ears. There's, there's something we can do there. And so it's been this journey of of working through what are the technologies that we need. And as I said before, we realized very early on is that the core technologies that make AirPods Pro amazing, active noise cancellation, transparency, things like conversation boost, all this stuff, they're the same things that you ultimately, if you do them really well, can enable these hearing features, whether it's the hearing protection, the hearing test, and the, and the hearing aid. And so it's, it's been something we've been interested in working towards for many years. And I think, as, as Sumble said, this has been a labor of love for a lot of people here because so many people, you know, through whether personally or through friends or family, they, they, you know, they experience this issue. And so this is something that's been, you know, we've been working on for quite some time. I don't know, Sumble, if you want to add to that. Yeah, well, what I'll add to that is, um, and we, we have these conversations very often, we don't like to just throw technology at the wall and just do technology mm -hmm. for technology's sake. We want to solve a problem. And and there is a meaningful problem to be solved here. And our technology uniquely was able to solve a problem in a differentiated way. And I think that's also when we look at, you know, like as John talked about, we've been talking about it for a while, but we also talked a lot about like, what can we bring to the table to meaningfully solve this problem and deliver it in a way that is scientifically grounded, validated and excellent. And, and so all of that plays a role when we make kind of decisions around the products we, we deliver, particularly in health as well, but that's across the board for all of our products. Yeah, you know, with, with AirPods Pro 2, I think this is what also has, I guess you could say, surprise, I don't want to say surprised and delighted, but you know, the AirPods Pro, AirPods Pro 2 lineup, you guys have delivered massive software updates over the past two, two and a half years for free for people that are listening and watching for free, right? This is the, that have literally transformed these in my ear. And, you know, I, we say the cliche, like, take it up to another level. You have continued to take this up to another level. So um, I'm just kind of curious from a hardware standpoint, you can get a little nitty gritty with this if you want to, John, but what's actually enabling you, is it, I don't want to say like, oh, you guys are so good. You made it so good a long time ago that you can just keep on stacking on this. But but what what is about the hardware um, maybe some specifics that has allowed you to stack these features on top of each other without having people basically have to buy new AirPods. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it actually does go back to the beginning, and there's a huge leap between AirPods, AirPods Pro One and AirPods Pro Two with the H2 chip, right? And and this recognition that you know, in the past, I think you would have just thought of headphones as just accessories, and you get them, and they do one thing, and you use them until you're done, and you go on to the next thing. But we were actually, you know building a platform here, a computing platform. And, and so what was amazing, and this is obviously one of the great benefits we have working here is we have this incredible silicon team, is they built just a lot of power and capability and headroom into H2. And you know our software and firmware teams created a system architecture that allowed for us to keep adding in features and capabilities as we went. And so it was really about kind of recognizing in the beginning that this is a platform that's gonna grow over time and we need to build it as such. It's not just a 
one-off single purpose accessory. And so because of that, I think we've been able, been able to do this. You know, Sumble, I, I had a follow up here because you're the VP of health, but when, before you came to Apple, forgive me if I'm not well versed in this, but I'm kind of curious what your experience was before Apple and maybe how the things that you as the team think of can be transformed because of basically the, the brain power that Apple has and, and someone in your position. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. I used to work um, prior to coming to Apple. I was at Stanford, and so I um, spent a lot of time at Stanford thinking about the use of technology in improving healthcare. And I was at a, at an academic center, and so we spend a lot of time. You know, you always assume that universities are where the best science happens. Mm -hmm. I think what's been most remarkable to me about um, the opportunity to be here and work with these amazing teams is. The amount of science that goes into the work we do day to day is remarkable. And I would say on par, if not, um, my academic friends might be upset that I say this, but if on, <laughs> on par or we even like better than most academic centers. I mean, the amount of rigor that goes into the work we deliver. And I think one of the best things is we don't just talk about the science and deliver, you know, like ideas. We actually deliver it. and. And that's really powerful. And we do it in a way that's usable and simple to understand and think about the design um, and how it's intuitive for people. And that goes a long way because that's actually when people engage and use it. And that's how you have meaningful change and impact happen in your health. And so that's probably been one of the most special things about coming from a different world and being able to bring that here and, and work with these amazing teams that are able to deliver these like groundbreaking products. Yeah, I mean, I was just kind of curious about that because I figured maybe you, I don't want to say you were an outsider, but outside of the Apple bubble, what it's like versus being inside of it and just kind of getting some of that insight is really cool. Symbol, I also am curious because a lot of people, when they hear this, they're like, okay, how, how legit is this? And I'm just wondering if you can kind of break down when you say it's clinically validated and we have time, so you can talk and go into it, but what there's clearly was a multi-step process and what test group A, test group B, can you kind of talk about how this was actually validated? Because it wasn't just like, oh, we're gonna apply and do it. I mean, it took a lot of time to do this, right? It did take a lot of time to do it. And, and you know, the products are, maybe I'll just start from the regulatory side, is that it is a de novo product. So what that means, it's the first of its kind. It's a software as a mm. medical device. And so in order to deliver that, what that means is that we need to make sure that it is clinically safe, not gonna cause harm, and actually meets kind of comparable levels to gold standard. And the way I always explain that is um, when you think about the features, let's just break them up. Like the hearing test feature is its own um, regulated feature actually. So that has to be validated against a gold standard. So what does that mean? So pure tone audiometry and like the audiograms that are done in audiologist offices are what we use as gold standard to compare our hearing test to. So when we deliver a hearing test, we need to make sure our results show that we are on par with what happens in a clinical audiologist office. The reason that's important is and we feel this from, a, from an Apple standpoint is the fact that we are now democratizing the ability to take a mm -hmm. test at home, we feel, and I particularly feel this way from a physician standpoint, is that we have to make sure we deliver it at even a higher bar than what you get when you go to a doctor's office. Because usually when you're going to a clinician's office, you have that clinician there with you by your side. But now it's you interacting with this individually. So we always want to make sure that our validation from a scientific standpoint is hitting um, specifications that are basically showing that they're almost exactly on par and that's what we hit from a validation standpoint on our hearing test. For the hearing aid feature, we had to do the same thing. We had to validate the hearing aid feature to show that it improved hearing at the same decibel levels that it would do for a for individuals who have mild to moderate hearing loss that would be compared to like a traditional hearing aid. The other thing that we did and John should talk about the tips, the different tips that we use because I think that plays a role in this is you know, when you get a hearing aid traditionally, you have an audiologist actually help you fit the hearing um, aid. What we now are doing is you're doing it yourself. So we actually tested self-fitting, which means an individual putting in the hearing aid themselves compared to it being fit by an audiologist. Mm -hmm. And we actually were on par there as well, equivocal. So like all of that goes into the validation testing. And so what does that mean? We run studies. We run like human studies where we have people participate in the studies, we enroll them, they, they do a comparison using our device, using traditional, and then we show what the results are and we have to provide that to the FDA mm. for our, our clearance or any regulatory body we're working with worldwide.
That's insane. I mean, thank you for that. It just, it just gives me as someone who, yes, we believe it's clinically validated, but even that was probably a truncated explanation of all the things that you have to do, right, to get it put through, pushed through for all these different features. Yeah, I'm saving you a lot of the detail. But John, <laughs> should also talk about the four different tips because that's really important. That plays a big role in the in the self tip, the self. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I think that builds on again the the obviously you want great we want great fits for AirPods Pro anyway, right? And so one of the things that we've been doing over the years is fitting these devices is really challenging because everybody's ears are different. Ears are like fingerprints. Nobody has the same ear and the range of sizes and, and shapes is so big that we just do, you know, we scan thousands and thousands of ears in development so that we can find a shape that will cover, you know, the broadest population possible. And with AirPods Pro 2, we ship four different tips in the box. And then we even have the, you know, the seal test where you can put it in and you can test to see, you know, it will tell you if it's a good seal or if you should try a different tip. And so it's building all those technologies to enable, you know, as, as Sumble said, the ability for someone to just do this at home in the, in the comfort of their living room, which I think is a really powerful, powerful thing. You, you know, the underrated thing about those tips is when you brought the uh, extra small into the fold, I think that changed a lot of things for a lot of people. There's people I think it that did. said yeah. they, they couldn't fit AirPods in their ear, pros in their ear, and the extra small is what got them to be like, I can do this now, right? Something that on an outsider would think, oh, it's really just that simple, but you're, like you said, every ear is kind of like a fingerprint, and that was a big thing. I know a lot of people that said their ears were too small initially. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's a huge challenge trying to fit everybody's ears, but it's something that we're, we're always pushing on. Now, you know, we talked about the hearing aid um, features, and I also wanted to talk about hearing protection because I got a chance to go out to a concert, Charlie XCX. Apple was kind enough to take me out, and, you know, I put in, this is the first time I've actually been to any concert where I used any type of hearing protection, and I'm... You know, people that Brian, are watching. you should be using hearing protection at concerts. <laughs> Thanks, Doctor. Thanks, Doctor Turnus. I think I think I'm going to listen to take Sumble's advice on this. We'll say the same. You thing. should be listening <laughs> using that for hearing concerts. Thanks, Doctor Turnus. But uh, you know, it was not only was it an eye opener or ear opener. It was just incredible how you know the AirPods Pro. You can still hear the key sounds, the highs, the lows, but you're not hearing all that extra stuff that just makes your head hurt. I, t I kind of forgot I even had the AirPods Pro in. I took them out and I was just like, holy crap, I need to put these back in right away. It, it was a game changer for me of how I'm going to approach going to concerts because the sound still sounded great. I know there's a lot of other hearing products out there, but can you maybe talk about what's happening or what might be a little different with the AirPods Pro and ha how they're managing this hearing protection? Yeah, well, I think, you know, it's the combination. So in AirPods Pro, you get some amount of what we call passive attenuation, which is just from having the ear tip in your ear. And then, of course, we have active noise cancellation, which brings those levels down as well. And they're incredibly effective. I mean, we can we can reduce that that loudness quite a bit. But if you take traditional earplugs, maybe the foam earplugs or something, you go to a concert, you you, you don't get kind of a, a uniform reduction in, in loudness. Different frequencies are affected in different ways, and so the sound the sound is kind of muddy and not that great, and that's why I think a lot of people don't want to use it. This is one of my favorite use cases of AirPods Pro is, is um, because because our transparency, we've, we take so much pride in the quality of the transparency feature that we've developed and, and so to the point where, you know, you just feel like there's nothing in your ears, right? Uh, once we have that ability and we have this incredible performance of H2 or we're sampling at 48,000 times a second, we can actually bring down the frequencies kind of evenly so that we're preserving that, that sound stage. We're pre preserving the, you know, the, the, the actual music. And it's really powerful. It sounds amazing. And my favorite thing is you go to a show, you walk out, you take them out, the show's over. There's no ring in your ears, nothing, you know, you don't have that kind of dead sound that you normally get. Those th symptoms, like the ringing, I mean, someone would know better than me, but that's actual damage that's happening to your ears. And if we can avoid that by using these, it's a, yeah, it's a great thing. I mean, and that's the thing is that that noise when it is that loud, like an average concert's at 110 decibels, whereas yep, normally moderate <laughs> sound is like 50 to 60, right? And that's moderate noise you just think about your doubling your at your exposure right and it's not a short period of time i mean if you're going to certain concerts nowadays that's not a like they're long right so it the ability to potentially and hearing loss is cumulative so the more that you can engage in that kind of behavior that's prevention over time and that in and of itself is truly impactful and everybody gets to use that yeah the the whole ringing sensation the day after it's not even the right after the concert it, we're talking about the day after i didn't feel it at all and i said holy crap like 
this is a game changer, right? Um, it, it really, really made an impact. And, you know, even the person, one of my friends that was with me, she's like, oh, I said, oh, what mode are you using? Are you using um, adaptive or transparency? She's like, no, I'm using noise canceling because <laughs> it was so loud. <laughs> And I said, <laughs> it does work. And I tried it. I'm like, no, no, I need at least transparency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mode, right? <laughs> I think transparency for all you concert goers, and when you you all can try this on your own. I thought that that was um, <laughs> the most effective. You know, I also was kind of curious. There's a lot of times where because I'm in a fortunate position to talk to you about this. You know, we don't always get to hear maybe some nuggets or insights you have behind the scenes that customers just don't maybe think about or know about how this process went along or even something related to the AirPods Pro. So I was just curious if during this project and during this, uh, I guess, this hearing experience, were there, were there any things that maybe you think people might take for granted that you're like, hey, you need to pay attention to this? I don't know, Sumba, what do you think? You want to go first? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right, um, good question, Brian. Exactly. This one. It's a good one. Um, you know, honestly, it's, it's all of it. I think that we talked a lot about it, but I think that, you know, like the, the amount of detail, like I'll give you one example, like the results for the hearing test. Um, you have no idea how much we obsessed about what the words were because we wanted to make sure when we give you the results, you may be getting a result that you did not expect. And we have to be really thoughtful about how we deliver that 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 information like I kind of joke internally but it's actually not a joke it's real is that it's our bedside manner right like we have to provide um, no news to someone in a way that is going to make them feel informed empowered and then figure out ways to educate them to do the right thing next and take that next step and not scare them and so that you know the amount of time that goes into every word that we select like i i obsess about those words quite frequently i do a final copy review i'm reviewing it and we like review it over and over again just to make sure that we feel really good about what we're putting out there because we realize that again you're not with someone you're not with the provider so we hold ourselves to a higher level to really think about how, how would I want to get this news in this in a situation that may be potentially eye-opening for me. And so maybe that's a little nugget of something that um, maybe people don't always realize, but we put a lot of time into thinking through. I, I think for me, one of the things, I, I kind of touched on it before, but that, that was a big kind of light bulb moment is this recognition that the same features that we're developing for just making great AirPods Pro were also the core things that we needed to make in a comprehensive hearing health solution, right? So like active noise cancellation, well, you love it when you're on the plane or on the bus or whatever, you know, bring that noise level down. But when it gets good enough, you're like, wow, it really can protect my ears at a concert or something like that, right? And then transparency, you know, being able to walk around with your AirPods in, have someone talk to you, you hear them, like that's really powerful. And then you realize when the transparency is that good, we can, bring sound levels down like we do in the concert situation, but we can also augment, we can boost them, and we can boost them at certain frequencies, and there you have the, the hearing assistance. So I think it's just really cool that in the end, our, our hearing is, it's a, they're very simple, right? We have two listening devices in our ears, and then we have this incredible computer in our brain that does all the processing. And so if we can manage these you know, combinations of noise cancellation and transparency, we can create these really cool outcomes. Yeah, you know, I think that um, you're, John, I know you don't pick favorites, so I'm going to pick a favorite for you. I think <laughs> okay, that a good. lot of people, a lot of people, talk about how the AirPods Pro and AirPods Pro 2 arguably might be Apple's best product. Just, I mean, you think about this. We have basically a supercomputer in our ear. I think people take that for granted with what's happening, and so this is a great product. Where I don't, I don't think there's many. There, honestly, there's not things to be like, oh, this is this is a horrible product. This is a bad product. I mean, it's a superior, top tier, excellent product. I mean, again, kudos to you and your team for continue to stack features without charging. I, I just can't, I can't, you know, that, that just isn't not normal from most companies that are running a business. Um, but I did want to kind of ask, end this with one question for both of you. You know, we talked about the hearing, you know, we've seen all these new features for AirPods, but where do you maybe see AirPods going next when it comes to health? John, you can go first and then I'll do this one second. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never talk about future products. So John, that's not John. Think, notice I didn't ask that. I said I didn't ask that. I said, where do you see AirPods going in the future with health? That's, we'll let the science talking. guide us. So wherever the science will take us is where we're taking it. <laughs> well said. Well you said. Know, you, see, I tried to sneak that one in there too. Did you notice? We that? saw that. We saw that. I, yeah. I, tried, I tried to sneak that in. Okay. All right. 
<laughs> um, thank you, Sumble and John. This was great. Um, just a lot of great information. Really appreciate it. And uh, you know, hopefully talk to you guys soon. But thanks, thanks again. This was great. Thank you so Sounds much. Sounds good. Thanks, Brian. All right, thanks.